I don't have a lot of expectations for the novel, but I do have a lot of hopes for it. And the biggest of the, those hopes is that my fellow Bruneians will read the story, will like the story, that would be ideal, but also that they will see something in the story that reflects their experience of Brunei in some way, um, that reflects either their experience or their experience of Bruneian history in some way. Um, that would be my greatest hope for the story. So this story is set in two time zones, both modern day Brunei and historical Brunei. Um, it's the story of a man called Lisan, who's a fisherman and who comes from the water village and who has always believed that he's descended from royalty. So at the beginning of the novel, he's been away from the water village for eight years, but now he's come back and he says he can prove he's descended from royalty. So at the same time, there is a storyline about two royal children and their doomed relationship and the kind of chain of events that they set into motion that will end up with the death of a king or the death of a god. So as the novel progresses, we find out more about Lee Sun's true intentions and what he was really doing in those years away. And we also unravel the story of those doomed royal children and the god that they called forward. So my story was inspired by a few different things. The biggest thing that inspired my story was a picture that was floating around the internet in 2011 um, and it was an aerial picture of the Brunei River um, which showed a giant sea serpent swimming along the Brunei River um, and that really just um, interested me a lot and I thought what if, what if that was true? Just because there are so many myths and legends about giant snakes in the South China Sea and in Brunei and underneath the water village. Um, so that question of what if, what if that was true and there was something to those myths and legends really interested me. Um, the second thing that inspired my story was Brunei history, these fragmented bits of Brunei history. Um, two stories in particular caught my imagination. The first was a story of the 17th century civil war in Brunei. There was this guy Sultan Abdul Hakumu bin and one of the stories about him is that he was a usurper to the throne and he loaded the crown jewels and the royal regalia into a cannon and shot them into the Brunei River um, rather than yield the throne. And I just thought that was always a very picturesque image for me. At the same time, there's also a story about these royal children who were caught sinning and were sentenced to death via underground burial. They were given enough supplies for about 40 days um, and basically when the smoke from their cooking fire from that underground room ran out, that meant that they had run out of supplies and so they didn't have anything else to cook. And the story of these royal children is actually memorialized in Bandar Seri Begawan, which is this, the capital in Brunei. Um, and so the tomb sits in this parking lot in Brunei and you can read the story of those children there. So I deliberately didn't try to find out too much more about these stories, um, simply because I wanted to kind of connect them myself. They're all really suggestive stories and suggestive images and I wanted to I guess I, I enjoyed playing with the idea of what if they were all connected and how could they be connected. I don't have a lot of expectations for the novel, but I do have a lot of hopes for it. And the biggest of the, those hopes is that my fellow Bruneians will read the story, will like the story, that would be ideal, but also that they will see something in the story that reflects their experience of Brunei in some way. Um, that reflects either their experience or their experience of Brunei history in some way. Um, that would be my greatest hope for the story.